Hi guys and welcome to our Navistar Legal uh, SME Insights. Today I have Adele Theron. Hi Adele. Hello. She's, here, uh, she's the founder of Naked Recovery and she's a trauma therapist and she's here to talk to us a little bit about some of the things that may be going on uh, during this unprecedented time as they call it. Um, Adele, thanks for coming. Tell, oh, she's and one of the things that's most important for me anyway is that she's a business owner and she's been a business owner for a number of years. She's been through that uh, experience of growing her business and, and from all intents and purposes is doing really well. So why don't you tell us about your business journey and your personal journey. Where in the world are you first of all? Yeah, so it's really good to be uh, chatting to you, Joe. I think we met many, many years ago. So I started my my business started in 2009. Um, I don't know when we met. Like, I think it was like three or four years it after then. I don't know when it was. But yeah, right, yeah, 2012. 2012, that's it. So um, basically, I am a certified clinical trauma therapist and I work with people to help them get over all sorts of unpleasant things that happen in life, be it a, a bankruptcy, a divorce, a bereavement, a redundancy, um, you know, birth trauma, all those kinds of horrible events that happen. There's me standing with them in the trenches, like walking through all that stuff. And I have a business partner in South Africa that, that does similar. And basically we run our programs, retreats, and we do coaching to help people through those kind of horrible things that happen. And I started my business in London. And uh, I think after about, by that point, I don't know, I think it was 2000, and 14, I'd had enough of London. By then I'd already been in London almost 11, 12 years and I was sort of done. Like I'd lived in other places. I'd traveled a lot with what I did because um, I also had a director of another company. We run these change management programs and I, I travel a lot and it was just a lot of this fast paced London stuff happening. And I think um, I kind of got to a point where I was like, right, I want to live somewhere different and as you do in the UK you're like all right we can move to Bath or Bristol and I did what, yeah. what anyone would do is, is I decided I'll move to Thailand yeah. why not we'll no. move to Thailand so I, I chucked everything and moved to Thailand and ran our like retreats and, and all that kind of stuff there and what's really cool about my business is um, I can move, live remotely I can live wherever I want and, you know, as long as I stay on the time zones of my clients who are predominantly uh, American, and then I've got a whole bunch in the e Middle East and a whole bunch in, in Asia and Australasia. So, uh, you know, obviously there are those in Europe, but, you know, I'm, I can basically live from anywhere and lived in Thailand for six years, living the dream. That was awesome. And now I live in New Zealand. Um, and I travel to London every three months, not at the moment, because obviously lockdown, that's not happening. And, um, you know, look after my business interests in London. My business is still a UK business. And uh, yeah, it's been a hell of a ride, like really, really fun. Uh, it's a real privilege to do what I do, but also a fun kind of adventure of being an entrepreneur um, for all that time. So yeah. Yeah, one thing I know about you is you're you connected worldwide. Like you, you, you have got your network and kind of tentacles <laughs> go everywhere. How are you? I imagine that you're quite plugged into the general mood, the international mood of of people at the moment. What are you finding? How are you finding in the business community generally? How are you finding people coping with things? Well, I mean, you, you obviously you're talking about the lockdown, yeah, right? Yeah, um, the lockdown and the, and the yeah, specific worldwide changes that are occurring as a result. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's really been a roller coaster. So I think in the beginning, when everybody began, it was um, people had different camps of how they were experiencing the lockdown. So right in the beginning, um, it was kind of for some people, it was like a super awesome adventure. It's like yay we're starring in a movie called the lockdown 
and it's super exciting and we're going to like <laughs> learn languages and do TikToks and you know, it's going to be awesome. We're going to bake every recipe in this book and we're going to do all these activities with kids and you know, it's just going to be amazing. And like, I think some people were really in that camp of just over enthusiastic, super excited. Other people were, you know, particularly if their industry and livelihoods were massively affected, were absolutely devastated. I mean, we had people who had to make almost an entire company redundant and, you know, um, just, you know, lots of that financial uncertainty, losing jobs, losing profession. And, and now, don't know how long this is going to last what's going to happen these people were completely traumatized um you know understandably so some people who had pre-existing conditions of anxiety um or mental health issues this lockdown just sent them into massive spiral of of kind of just anxiety and then health related issues coming off the back of that blood pressure issues um shingles you know, and all kinds of neurological conditions and autoimmune conditions that started just manifesting because of that kind of the, the adrenaline and the stress levels going up. Um, and then others who were just completely almost oblivious, like what lockdown? Why is it, what's everyone doing? Um, what is this drama about? You know, <laughs> so I think it's just, uh, you know, I think that the thing is, is that level, this level of uncertainty and the unprecedented time, as everybody calls it, everyone's just coping as best they can because there's no roadmap for it. We do not have from a psychological perspective, any kind of uh, compass or roadmap for how we're supposed to navigate this. So everybody's just doing what they can. And I think those that were super enthusiastic at the beginning, like a lot of super enthusiastic first timers sprinted the start of this marathon. And now everyone's knackered. They're grumpy. This groundhog day is, pissing them off, quite frankly. And I think there's just this scratchiness that we're starting to see. And that's definitely in the last week, this table has turned. And I think you'll start to see, you know, people starting to flout the lockdown rules, starting to like go, well, I've had enough now. I'm starting to do what I want to do. People escaping in their way, people starting to have parties and events and, you know, just kind of like they've had enough. And I think governments in response to that are starting to shift and maneuver numbers in particular ways to basically justify a reason to end lockdown early. Um, I mean, we've definitely seen that already in the UK, US, there's murmurings of that. And you can kind of see it because, you know, you've got real risks. There's, there's the very sad and horrible reality that some people have, have faced you know, clients, clients I've had who have had family that have died from COVID. And, you know, there's that very real reality. We can die from COVID, but what, what about all the deaths and possible losses associated to this massive financial and economic um, damage that is being done daily by this, by this pandemic? So I think people have this impossible decision, like weighing up deaths in, in, from a pandemic and then death related to stress, financial issues, and just the chaos of this uncertainty. So it's going to be very intriguing to see what happens in the coming two weeks, for sure. Take me back to basics. So when you say trauma, when you say people experiencing trauma, what do you mean? Because I, like, to me, when I think of trauma, I'm like, this is going to be, you know, there's going to be an axe murderer who, you know, killed all my children. And then it, it, like, that's the kind of trauma that I picture. I don't picture the trauma that, you know, certainly I've experienced in, in the, the situations with, with my business in the letting go of colleagues in having to make difficult decisions when, you know, in my experience, not everybody's having to make those experiences. It, does that create trauma? Am, am I traumatized or do I, do is something else happen with the trauma, with the experience that, that kind of creates the trauma? Tell me, like, what do you mean by that? So trauma, trauma um, there's many different definitions. Um, I mean, in a nutshell, it's basically it's a disturbing, horrible thing that is happening to us. Um, and it's kind of something that's usually out of, out of our control. 
So we lose our locus of control. It's something that's happening that we didn't have any say or control over that thing happening. The thing that makes this entire pandemic traumatic for so many people is not just the nature of this thing, the pace of it. Firstly, the pace in the beginning was absolutely mental. And I think that when you have uncertainty at that pace, it's the same level of trauma and PTSD that we saw with the global financial crisis in 2008. So it's, it's that same feeling of, I don't know what is coming, it's bad. I don't feel good about it. I'm not sleeping well. My blood pressure is starting to rise. I'm starting to get a dry throat. My shoulders are sore. So there's some kind of body impact that happens because there's this feeling of elevated stress and this uncertainty. The traumatic experience is very much related to everyone's personal kind of background and context in, in going through the pandemic. So whether or not they personally have been impacted by the situation. And also, secondly, their own predisposition to be more emotional, you know, due to pre-existing conditions or whatever. Like if you're a highly emotional person who's lost everything as a result of this pandemic, this is a massively traumatic event in your life. If you've personally lost someone or you have a loved one who you couldn't say goodbye to and they died in hospital on their own, that is massively traumatic. But it's all the way to the other side of the spectrum where, you know, you just work from home, you see all the stuff happening around you, you're kind of oblivious, you're not a very emotional person, then that's not a traumatic event for you. But I think it's important that for the people who are not experiencing this very personally, and they're not very emotional about it, to have some empathy for what others might be going through. Because this is very traumatic for many, many people who are out there, either based on how it affects them or how emotional they react to mass uncertainty coming at us at pace. So I think sometimes that that uh, lack of empathy can really then stigmatize talking about it. So then what ends up happening is those people who are going through the trauma, they keep quiet about it because they feel well, everyone else is, is doing TikToks and having a wonderful time. And I'm actually, I can't sleep. And I, I'm feeling completely like depressed, upset, devastated because this thing has just happened. And then they keep quiet. They get depressed. They get suppressed. And then we have a massive mental health issue on our hands. How do we... Look, I know because I've seen some of your techniques. We went to, uh, I can't remember, it was somewhere in Birmingham where I, I watched one of your trauma techniques of the, the bat and the ice. And <laughs> you had a great, uh, you got some great, I think you, you were looking at an exercise regime at some point, kind of trauma related. How do we deal with that trauma? If we today, you know, we, we're not necessarily speaking to a, a therapist, we don't have you on our side, like, how do we deal with things like, first of all, how do we know we're in trauma? That's probably a better question to start with. And then second of all, how do we deal with that? So firstly, how you know that you're not uh, doing very well right now is your sleep is affected. You're, you're actually starting to notice health changes within your body. So maybe you got more heart palpitations. Maybe you're feeling much more anxious. Maybe you've had even a full-blown panic attack. Maybe you're ruminating, you're thinking dark stuff and, and you're experiencing what they call this anticipated grief, which is just something's coming. We don't know what it is, but we're feeling sad and bad about it. You start to notice that your mood has shifted or you're having problems within your body, like your tummy issues have gone completely out the window you are starting to have unexplained insomnia or there's like unexplained stress. You're starting to experience a version. I wouldn't say being traumatized. That's a very strong word, but there's traumatic effect. You're struggling to regulate what is happening. You're starting to have some effects from the global uncertainty that is happening. You need to take some action. So some of the stuff you can do, you know, the exercise you're describing, <laughs> bitch with a bat, right? So you basically <laughs> get a baseball bat, write out on cards, all the stuff you're really upset and emotional about, and then, you know, beat, beat it up, like either bags of ice or a big tire, you chop some wood, 
And that, that chopping motion, the diagonal chopping motion is actually very cathartic to release incredible amounts of irritation, anger, and like wound up stress, particularly if your jaw is starting to hurt and stuff. This is, this is an excellent exercise. It's a, it's a form of catharsis therapy. It's called the Hoffman technique. Um, and I think just anything that you can kind of do some kind of explosive emotional release at this time is a good one. So what we're looking at is, ah, you know, screaming into a pillow, like just roaring, beating the living crap out of pillows and tires, right? We don't want to ram someone with a shopping trolley. Like this is about you expressing your experience and your emotional stuff by yourself in a safe space, in your garden shed, playing the prodigy, whatever it is you want to do, but just get it out. And, and if it's noisy and it's vocal and there's lots of rage and shouting and stuff with it, that's probably going to be quite cathartic for you. Mm. And with pent up release or, you know, pent up like adrenaline, pent up cortisol, that release is really good. And you'll probably find once you've released that immediate aggression, you'll feel a bit emotional. Then you want to kind of hug yourself, rub your arms like on the side and kind of self-soothe and comfort. And that's a really, really good technique as well is, is understanding that no emotion when you truly feel it will last for more than 27 minutes. So you just got to like layers of the onion, you just got to find the edge of that emotion and then drop down into the next one and the next one and the next one. And, and eventually you'll come to nothing. There will be, it's called the orb of emotions. You have all these layers of emotion. You just got to get to nothing. And um, when you've got to nothing, you'll feel very heightened awareness. Like you can really be present and see and smell and, and experience things at a very heightened level. So that's one technique. The other thing you can do is kind of, if you're a good writer, you can do what we call narrative exposure, which are you write, you journal, that's pages and pages of how am I feeling. Yeah, that's my favorite way for sure. <laughs> you know, right? you very if you're a very cerebral, yeah, cerebral person, you want to write, 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 write. Yeah. The other thing you can do is the bucketing exercise. So this is when you, you do with a partner, and the partner holds an invisible bucket. And you just rant into the bucket. Now, they mustn't interrogate or have any conversation about what you're ranting about. You just rant, rant. All your partner does is say, is there anything else? And you just go, blah, blah, blah. I'm annoyed about this. And I've said about this. Blah, blah, blah. And you let the person just get empty. They just got to empty all of that stuff out. These are the people that think while they speak. They need to speak a lot so that they can think straight. Okay, so... Ran, 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 put in the bucket. And at the end of that experience, you just throw this bucket out the window awesome. and then you can swap with your partner. I mean, there's lots of other stuff that I would recommend, but I think in a nutshell, the, these techniques are quite useful. Also clenching your entire body and release, clench and release. You do this for, you know, two or three minutes throughout the day. Again, it's that, it's that constant Think of it as like when you shake up a Coca-Cola bottle and you open that lid, everything will go spray. But if you shake it up and you slowly just open the lid and you just let a little bit, this is what you want to do throughout the day. You're just taking that edge off and just expressing a little bit of this pent up aggression. And obviously exercise does help because that's a really good uh, reliever of cortisol. And frantic exercise for short periods is better than going on a long run that actually just increases your cortisol levels anyway. You want to kind of think of it as um, running up and down the stairs frantically for like 30 seconds. That is more of a cortisol release than some long marathon thing. Like it's not about time. It's just that getting it out. Final one, if you're feeling very anxious, you want to shake it out. Okay. So, you know, like when, a, when an animal gets a super big fright and they like freak out and they're standing there like shaking, <laughs> human beings have the same mechanism. So you can use the trauma release exercise, the TRE, which is basically you lie flat on your back with your knees up and you pretend you're a piece of bacon in a frying pan. You shake, 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 shake. Love or you it. stand up straight and you shake, shake, shake your whole body out. And this is good to release anxiety amazing yeah. so good i mean 
the trauma aspect of this is really about our mental health, isn't it? It, it? I mean, I imagine just like anything, there's a kind of spectrum of where we are on that tra- where we are on a on a trauma scale. Some of us, like you say, will be completely emotionally dis- maybe disconnected. Does that mean well, if just because I'm emotionally disconnected, does that mean I'm not experiencing trauma? I'm experiencing trauma within, but I'm just not necessarily expressing it. So question. <laughs> Do you think that because like I don't know. Yeah. It may come up. I don't, I, th- I think you shouldn't. Yeah, I don't know. I think um you you don't know actually. Like right. if it's not bugging you, like they say, you know, they say if it's not broken, don't fix it. Like if it's not yeah. bugging you, that's fine. Yeah. If it's bugging your partner because you're emotionally dead and don't have empathy for your partner, okay, then it's not yeah. fine. You need to yeah, kind yeah, of address yeah. it and develop your empathy. But I think if it's not bugging you and you're, as they say in Kiwi land, sweet as moving through the lockdown, terrific. Yeah, There's nothing great. to fix there. If it then comes back to bite you in a few weeks time, all right, fine. Then in a few weeks time, go and see a trauma therapist, come and have a chat and we'll figure yeah. out what you've suppressed darkly yeah. over this time. Don't overthink it. Right. I mean, it's, it's like, no, none of us have ever gone through anything like this before. So we don't know, like there is no, like in, <laughs> in, in psychological terms, like we don't know when this is going to end. We don't know what the after effects are. We don't know what's going to happen in a few weeks time. But if you start to feel certain symptoms, like I sort of said to you before, you starting to feel, okay, I'm not feeling okay. Mm. I don't feel okay. I don't feel normal. Starting to notice I can't regulate my emotions really well. I'm screaming at children for no apparent reason, I want to ram her with the shopping trolley. I want to kill Sarah and Brad on Facebook because they've done the cop- couples challenge and they're really annoying me. If you start to feel these feelings and they're completely out of character, it's probably time to like then have a bit of a chat. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know, I am feeling those feelings. I was like, oh, wait a minute. And then I thought, no, but they're not out of character then. <laughs> they, they, they come and go, so that's okay. Okay, I'm not traumatized yet. Good, great. I know that you've been working with a lot of people around their businesses and, and shifts in business uh, and not, not just business owners, but also people who are in business who have been let go, made redundant. What are, what are some of the things that you're seeing there? How is that? How is it affecting these individuals and their livelihoods and financially? What are you seeing at the moment? Well, this is this is the part that I'm uh, super interested in leaning into, and I'm working with um, a partner on that. She is a business strategist, and we're sort of working together to kind of work on a a program to help business get over what is happening and to pivot and to try and figure it out. And I think. Certain critical things that have to happen is you you firstly need to get control of finance. Like that is really critical. Like if if the business doesn't have an understanding of their cash flow, liquidity, what's actually going on there, this is a disaster. Um, the lockdown. So that's one of the critical things. I mean, I'm assuming that that most entrepreneurs are doing that. But if you're not, and it's a weakness for you. You need to go and check out, well, how, how many months of money have I got? What, how long can I survive? Like if I reduce all of my expenses and I just get right to the crack, start canceling these random software contracts and that kind of stuff that you've got going on. You don't need them right now. You can basically just get down to basics, get everything kind of on autopilot and do what you can to make whatever money you've got last as long as possible. This is in particular, if your business is frozen, right. And you can't actually trade at the moment and you, you, you need to kind of, you know, uh, make other plans. So I think finance, looking at the costs, uh, making really clear, like if I do this, this and this, how long can my business last? The next thing is to start to look at pivoting. So, the reality no, is that whenever you, know, you say I, pivot, whenever I hear people talking about pivot, I just picture Ross from Friends, you know, with the like, pivot, pivot. And it, it was one of my team members that said that. Now every time I hear that phrase, and I'm hearing it a lot recently, 
that's the picture I have, like pivot, because you're not going to be able to move things forward if you can't pivot. <laughs> what do you mean by pivot? Yeah, but it's, but it's kind of um, pivoting is sort of trying to work out with the assets, skills and capabilities that you have. What else can you do with all this stuff mm. to like get through this crisis? So, for example, if you're a, um, you know, a simple example is a, a business in New Zealand and they run adventure camps for kids, right? And they have lots and lots of trees on the property and there's been lots of winds and storms and stuff and a lot of these trees came down and they've chainsawed the wood up. So they can't have any kids come on camp right now, but guess what? Now they can sell firewood as they head into winter. Everybody can sell firewood. They can do kayaking adventures down the river for local townsfolk because they, they can take these facilities and have other things that they can do, social distancing kayaking rides. And, you know, like you're thinking out the box, like what can we do with what we've got? You know, oh my gosh, like I can't see clients right now. Can you see them online? Mm -hmm. Can you do that meeting online? Can you... Um, have a social distancing safe way to trade. Can you get some of the people in and everybody's kind of distant from each other, still able to do what they were doing before, maybe in a different way. So you have to look at, can we work the same way in a different way? Or can we do something else for a bit that's needed? You know, some, some clothing manufacturers are making masks right now. They're making PPE. They're making, you know, um, some engineering companies are suddenly building respirators. You know, looking at what is the need in the market right now? What do people need? What do I have? What skills do I have? What capabilities do I have? How much money have I got? And how can I sort of figure this out? And it's difficult to see the wood for the trees within your own business. So this is a really good opportunity to get some guidance and supports a sounding board, someone that is someone else that can see what you can't see to work out what that pivot might be. I was actually thinking as well, just related to the bit you were talking about earlier around trauma. If, if I'm in trauma, I cannot make those sensible decisions. I can't actually see any next step, can I? Because I'm like, I'm in, for whatever reason, emotionally feeling connected to the business that I've had to let go. I'm struggling with making decisions. It, it all has an impact, doesn't it? Because I can't pivot if I'm in trauma. I can't pivot if I'm mentally not at my optimum. And so many people that I'm Definitely. speaking to are saying, just going to ride it out, I'm just going to hope this. But, but that doesn't allow us to be proactive and, and purposeful and driven in, a, in in what we're doing but at the same time is there a danger of being too driven and kind of moving far forward too fast in this environment exactly and i think an important thing to realize if you're experiencing trauma you okay so simply put trauma trauma response is a, is a brain response your brain takes over automatically it's not even something that you can control so if the alarm system in your brain, the amygdala, has been reactivated, basically it dumps out tons of adrenaline, noradrenaline, and in response to that, cortisol, to help you fight, flee, freeze, attack, whatever this perceived threat is that's coming in. Now, the problem is the minute cortisol goes up, it shuts down the hippocampus of the brain to actually focus all energy and attention on removing said human from, you know, incoming threat. Now, the, you don't want to overthink at that point. You just want to move really, really fast, right? So this, this brain response, we can't control the fact that our hippocampus has got shut down. And the hippocampus is the very calm librarian that can think logically, see opportunities, see the wood for the trees, understand what to do. And that's why so many people need help right now to support them, to calm down their threat mechanism so that they can put their hippocampus back online to think straight. I mean, from a trauma therapy perspective, like there's a lot going on at the moment because there's so many people that are in that position 
not and by no fault of their own it doesn't mean anything bad about you as a, as a human being that you're struggling to regulate normally at this time we have mass uncertainty coming and you don't know what's happening with your business if you're feeling more tired than usual you're you're not you're skittish you can't think straight well guess what the entire world is operating at about 65 to 70 percent of their usual rate of productivity so welcome to the club Mm. But the thing is, is even though it's not your fault that this thing has happened, it's still your responsibility to figure out what the hell to do next. Particularly if you're a business owner accountable for other people's livelihoods, it's your job to kind of get your hippocampus back online so that you can figure out what to do to ride this wave. Yeah. And, and then you can make sensible decisions from there. So I, I actually interrupted you on this. So we had, we were talking about finances and getting your finances straight, and then working out what else you can do. Did, did I cut you off, or was, it, was there anything else that, that these business owners can do in addition to kind of the pivot and understanding where they are financially? You, you've got to kind of understand that your ability to work out what to do next is very contingent on you getting your own hippocampus back online. You've got to, as an entrepreneur, value your health and well-being above all else. If you're struggling to do that yourself, you need to get help because you don't have time to like figure out, ride the wave and see what, what happens if this goes on for another six months? Do you have enough cash? Do you have enough of a plan to ride the wave for the next six months? If you don't, you've got to get yourself back online as quickly as possible to sort that out. So looking after your health and well-being, managing your own stress levels, you know, releasing that pressure from the pressure cooker every single day, you know, several, you know, uh, moments throughout the day. You've got to look at working very clearly, just practically on the logistics, right, money, finance, what have we got? How long is this going to last? Got it. What can we do? What expenses can we drop? How can we, how long can we make this last? Good. Next part, we're going to do this. Then we're going to do that. Sometimes you need somebody to help you with that or you need to get yourself to a place where you can think like that again, that kind of strategic tactical maneuvering um, where you just, you, you can then see what the pivot is, but it's actually, to be honest, quite hard to see the pivot in your own business. You know, I think yes. I, a lot of the entrepreneurs I'm working with at the moment, it's just, it's just so hard to see it. Um, they're like, oh, wow, I didn't think of that. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, but you don't see it in your own. You just don't see it in your own business like that. It's, it's uh, not. Like, probably the emotion. We can see it in others, though. Yeah, right. And it's probably the emotion as well, like the attachments to the way things have always been done. And it's only when somebody external, I mean, you know, we met in, in a group, didn't we? And, and the group dynamics of having people saying, what about this? What about that? Sometimes useful, sometimes not so useful, but you, you gain perspective from other people who don't think the way that you do. And, and there's, there's a power to that. I'm, and I can imagine, I mean, I'm just, my brain's just going, hmm, I should definitely, I should definitely connect with uh, Adele. I should definitely have this communication because those just being able to have a conversation about where you're going next. I, I spoke to a mentor uh, on Thursday this week, even just blurting it out and saying it out loud seemed to shift something in my mind. Where I was like, all oh, right, I've got these three presentations I've got to put together. Great. Moving on. Let's move forward. Um, like, you know, like we were saying earlier, maybe the, maybe this will catch up later, but right now it's just right. Get on with this, move this forward like you say, keeping the self-care, um, you know, for me, it's meditation in the morning and have a morning practice because that's what helps me to get through the day. But I know there are yeah. many people with a lot of kind of the mental health elements. I think it's going to be tough. Mm. I think that grounded routine is really critical. I like what you say about your morning routine, but actually you should have a daily checklist right now. From, you know, when, we, when we're working with people who are going through a trauma as we're working with them, you move to a different type of trauma therapy. It's called case management, where you're just literally trying to get this person through what is happening mm. in a way that they can, they can just focus. So you've got to 
have like a daily checklist, right? This is what I'm going to do in the morning. This is my little routine. This is my stuff at lunch. And then if you're struggling to concentrate, take your day and move it into two hour segments. So these two hours, this is what I'm going to do. Got it. Now we take a break. Now we do the next two hours. You're going to need more breaks. You're going to need more buffer time. Mm -hmm. You're going and expect yourself to not have a good memory. Expect yourself to not be at, at your usual level of productivity. So you need to make more notes. You need to write more down because you're not yourself right now. Mm -hmm. And I think just knowing that and, and knowing that collectively as a world, like everybody's doing this. Maybe they don't know these little tricks, but like everyone's in the same boat. Don't be hard on yourself. Don't take it personally. The people I'm actually worried about, to be honest with you, are the ones that are distracting themselves too much with conspiracy theories. Because I think what you want to do is when, you, when you're going through something that is massively uncertain, you want to avoid what they call the short-term emotion avoidance tactics. They call mm. steaks. These are the things that we do to take ourselves out of action, pivoting, moving forward, momentum, structure, basically any actions that are going to move us through this, this issue and kind of develop and learn and, and, and uh, you know, become resilient and actually succeed. Anything we do that is taking us totally off piste, where we now we're all about looking at 5G. We're all about like what's happening with the government and vaccines and people are gonna put robots under our skin and monitor us. And this stuff, it might be true, right? I'm not, I'm not saying for those people that, that are literally thinking that these terrible things are true, I'm not, su I'm not suggesting that they're not. They might very well be true, but be careful how much time you spend ruminating, researching, watching videos and distracting yourself with this stuff because I don't want those people to wake up in six weeks time and they spend so much time throwing themselves into that stuff that they've lost their business in the process. This is the time to get moving. Like we mm -hmm. have to stay focused and if we can't stay focused, we've got to get help to get back online, to get focused because we need to do the work that we need to do to survive. Um, and yeah. really, only the strongest are going to survive. Yeah, oh, that's such a powerful, that's such a powerful statement to end on because I think for me, that's, it's not the strongest. I used to have this thing about mental health that, you know, I'm, my mental health is not the same as everybody else's and maybe I'm weak. And actually reality is when I'm able to say, hey, I need help and I can reach out to people, I've become often stronger than those people that are not, you know, reaching out for help. And I'm able to kind of have the tools and the, and the structure and the process to be able to move me into a, a different way of thinking and a different way of being. So for me, this is a matter, of, a matter of being able to say in this world right now, how do I feel? How am I, how am I showing up? How am I managing my own emotion? yes, there are difficult things happening. And I think some people, certainly businesses, I think are experiencing it earlier than perhaps those who are employed may experience things later on down the line. Um, but but I, all I can do is focus on my experience and and ask those people around me and experts, which is which is kind of the important thing that, you, that you're saying, finding people that can actually move you forward in this particular time in a structured way that can get me from thinking, oh God, everything's, everything's changed. There's a lot of grief, a lot of grief out there. Everything has changed in a matter of weeks to, but I know exactly where I'm going and I know exactly what I need to do in order to get there. Um, and it may not be as quickly as, as, one might like in this environment, but at least there's that sense of purpose again. All right, amazing. And only the strong will survive. Exactly. So, yeah. And I, you know, I was just thinking the time when we met was that, well, the, the time when I met uh, our mutual friend was at the, in the last recession. And then we connected a couple of years after that. So I was thinking there's a kind of mirroring here of, of, that, of that situation. Look, Adele, how can people get in contact with you? How can people find out about the trauma response? Is there anything people do online? Like, tell me, tell me how, how we can get in contact. 
Yeah, I mean, I you can check me out on Naked Recovery online or Google me adulteron.com. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've got a weird name, so that's quite cool from a Google perspective. So I'm not difficult to find. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, whatever. But basically just, you know, message me, um, you know, Adele at nakedrecoveryonline.com. And, you know, if you want to have a chat uh, for anyone that listens to this particular thing, I'm happy to have a chat and, you know, we can explore what kind of solutions, um, you know, you need. And if, if it's appropriate and it looks like, you know, a couple of sessions with me would get you back online. Cool. You know, otherwise you might just get some value out of that chat. Just kind of often a, a burden shared is a burden halved. Right. And I think like, who can you talk to about this stuff? Like it's difficult. You can't always talk to your spouse. You can't friends or everyone's going through the same thing. Like they don't want to talk about your problem. Like it, you know, it's, <laughs> so you got to kind of find uh, an avenue to address what is going on. Like, like that self-awareness that actually I'm not okay. I need to sort myself out. Um, that is wisdom because I, I think if you can get yourself back online and back in focus as fast as possible, you, you're, you have, you have just basically opened the floodgates in your ability to navigate this crisis in the most empowering way. Mm. And, and you know one thing I love about you you're super pragmatic and you're very to the point like this is the way it's going to be but like you, there's, there's no fluff and nonsense with you but you're a very caring and loving individual so yeah I mean if, if anybody's out there and, and, they're, and they're struggling there's an offer right there from, from Adele thank you so much Adele I really hope well for everybody that's watching thank you for watching Adele I really appreciate you coming and joining and telling us about trauma <laughs> uh, telling us about the effects and, and how how we can most effectively move ourselves out of that place because it because it, it's a dark it can go into a dark place if we don't address it so i really appreciate that today giving us those top tips might work out where the baseball bat is if i can find some ice today get some of that, some of that aggression definitely <laughs> thank you so much um right Bye, bye you're so welcome and big hugs big hugs and kisses to you joe and big hugs to everyone uh, watching oh, this wait podcast. to see okay. <laughs>